Welcome to It's a Wonderful Life. I'm Peggy Hogan, Senior Citizen Coordinator for the City of Florissant. Financial scams targeting seniors have become so prevalent in today's society that they're now considered the crime of the 21st century. And why is this happening? Because seniors are thought to have significant amount of money sitting in their accounts. That's why they're targeted, but senior citizens of all backgrounds and financial positions are being scammed. The Florissant Police Department and the Florissant Senior Office want to inform our senior citizen population here about the types of scams and fraudulent activities that are affecting our senior citizen population. We hope to make you more aware to inform you about the way that these criminals are trying to scam people so that hopefully you can recognize these scams when you get the call. So I want to welcome today Officer Craig DeHart. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. From our City of Florissant Police Department. Uh, what we want to talk about is or what scams that you've seen in Florissant. So can you tell us what's going on here? And sure, sure. I'll, uh, I'll first introduce myself. I'm Officer Craig DeHart. I'm our Community Relations uh, Crime Prevention Officer here for the City of Florissant. So um, I've been doing this for about the last six months or so. Some people may have seen me on camera a few times and, mm -hmm. and um, I've done a few of the FPD roll call shows and things like that. So um, we're here to talk about the scams today. So the, the police department has seen quite a few scams that, uh, that target the senior yes, citizens in Florida. So, and I think we, you know, we've talked about it and most of them are the same. Yes. Um, an example of some of the ones we're gonna talk about are the pigeon drop scam which is actually the one that we've seen the most uh, out, of, out of the last six months or so is the pigeon drop scam. We'll explain that in a little bit. The IRS scam, a technical support scam, the lottery sweepstakes scam, and also uh, the, the age old contractor, you know, uh, wanting to scam you out of some money and not do any work. So uh, those are the ones that we've seen the most in the last six months. Yes. So which scam tends to produce more money for a criminal? The one that we've seen the, the most money get lost or get scammed from residents is the, is the pigeon drop scam. Pigeon drop. Right. Well, what is a pigeon drop? Okay, and it's, it, it's kind of a, of a term that yeah. everybody throws out mm -hmm. there. Uh, basically, it's, it's a scam where, where m the money, money is, uh, you're putting up good faith money to receive uh, either an inheritance or money that was found in a parking lot. Uh, you're putting up your own money as good faith to receive an, an enormous amount of money. So the, the pigeon drop is a one-on-one -on -one crime where these senior citizens are just doing their grocery shopping or whatever, right? And Correct. Ap approached by... Typically, what we've seen is this, the senior citizens are alone they're approached in a parking lot of a grocery store, a shopping center like Kmart or Target. Yeah. And then it's usually one person that approaches them, shows, most of the time shows them a large amount of money, or sometimes we've seen that, that they say that they need help getting an inheritance from a loved one. Uh, and, and all part of that scam is they, they want you to put up good faith money. Mm -hmm. They convince you to go into uh, the bank, typically it's at a, a, a Deerberg's or a Schnucks where there's a bank inside the store, so it's mm -hmm. very convenient for you to, yeah. to go in and withdraw money. Mm -hmm. They'll start with smaller amounts, you know, and then they might yeah. ask for more, you know, hey, $500 isn't enough, well, let's try and get a thousand, yes. you know, or they'll make phone calls and say, hey, that's not enough money, you know, they might, they might say they're consulting an attorney and they need more money to, to uh, make sure that the money they found is, is, is not someone else's. And the scam gets more involved as it goes on, which mm -hmm. starts involving more and more money. So, uh, and some of our pigeon drops, they've actually been two people. So one person, the, the, the elderly person, is contacting the parking lot by someone that typically befriends them. Starts it's usually a woman. Too, it's usually it? a woman, correct. Uh, we've seen male, female mm -hmm. um, combinations, yeah. but uh, uh, the victim is typically a woman, mm -hmm. and then they're approached by another woman 
and uh, a casual conversation has started yeah. and they kind of befriend them they'll talk about grandchildren and whatnot and then yeah. a third person will come up who is of course involved in the scam but they'll come up and, and approach the victim and the other person who has contacted the mm -hmm. victim and befriended them and said hey look what I just found and present them and show them a large amount of yeah. money and then the promise is to split it three ways well of course the the two suspects are working together mm -hmm. and uh, they convince the, the elderly person to get the good faith money. In fact, we've had quite a few that have withdrawn thousands of dollars and then we've also had one uh, um, victim that did not, she said, I don't have any money in the bank and they convinced her to give up her jewelry. So she lost, not money, but lost valuable jewelry that was worth a lot of money. I think what's really hard too for people watching this show they don't think they're going to fall for that. Right. But they're so believable. It's so nonchalant. Right. It's so, um, they're, they're good they're at good. their job, these yes. criminals. And they know what to say. They know what to, to what kind of um, things to, to play on yes. and get the, the trust of the victim. Yes. And it's very difficult for us to find out who these people are because they, they might come into the St. Louis area or Florissant area, do a few scams, and then be gone and to the next city or the next town. Yes. Uh, that's, I mean, you could be from here to Kansas City in three or four hours. Yeah. So by, yeah. The, by the time we get notified, and, and it's worth mentioning, sometimes we don't get notified of these scams until days afterward yes. because the victims are uh, embarrassed that they actually fell for this. And, and sometimes family members have to convince them to come report it to the police. Mm -hmm. So now we're three or four days or a week two weeks sometimes mm -hmm. after the fact trying to figure out what happened and who it was and these people by that time are long gone. And you said this has happened right here in Florissant. Absolutely, yes. It's happened about six times, five to six times in the last six months. Gosh, so that's so. why we have to keep we, reminding citizens everybody. on their toes and, and if you're approached by somebody in a parking lot, don't fall for that. Don't fall for it and call the police department immediately and let us know. Try to give us a description of the people. If you can get a description of the vehicle that they're in, mm -hmm. something that we can try and find these people. Because if, if, if one person doesn't fall victim, they're going to they're gonna try they're it gonna again try. almost right. immediately. Right. Uh, and I'm sure that, that more often than not, people are telling them, no, I'm not interested. And then they just move to the next person who, who is who is going to fall for it. And I think typically a lot of times you don't call the police just because nothing really happened. They just approach you and you, but if people do call, it might catch some of these criminals. Absolutely. So the ones that don't actually get scammed, but maybe have been approached by people that are, and if it, w if it wasn't a scam, that's okay, right? Sure. You guys just go along your way. Then. That's right. That's it, if it turns out to be something legitimate, then that's then, okay. Then that's okay. We everybody goes on on about their day. A lot of the times, it turns out to be that they were they were trying to scam yes. someone. So yes. So please notify us. Um, you know, no, it, or it doesn't necessarily have to be the, in Florissant. If it's anywhere in other any other other jurisdictions, notify mm -hmm. that that right. police department as right. well. Okay. So or notify us, and we can get in touch with that that police department it's just please notify someone who can try and catch these criminals when the act is being committed or shortly after so, okay. um, so that's the pigeon so that's drop the scam. pigeon drop okay all right so we've got a few more to talk about right, the next right. one the next biggest one I don't know of any actual money that has been lost from fluorescent residents but we've had a lot of lot of phone calls from uh, people claiming that they are IRS agents Yes. All right, and this is completely separate from the the uh, the people that are falling victim to stolen tax returns. Yeah, this is different. This is actually victims are receiving phone calls from uh, people on the telephone claiming to be IRS agents. They're very aggressive. They tell the the uh, victim, "Hey, you you owe money to the IRS." that uh, and then they try to get them to pay for it immediately pay the pay their penalty or pay whatever the the scam might be you owe us money or you owe us money before you can get your refund uh, they want you to pay it immediately uh, they want a debit card they want a credit card number uh, they want you to wire them money through uh, some sort of a, a, a money transfer money gram you know that kind of thing 
Uh, and sometimes if people or when people say, hey, or question it or, or, or say, well, I don't, I don't feel comfortable with this, they'll actually threaten to call the police, yes. have you arrested. Mm -hmm. um, some of the actual people that have notified me, and I think you as well, have, have, have called and said that they were going to send, they used the Florissant Police Department is going to come arrest you. Yeah. So these people know where you're located and use that local reference. Hey, the Florissant right. Police Department is going to come arrest you it if you don't pay it your, 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 your tax. It makes it more believable. Um, and I think too, in light of all the, you know, everybody knows it's been all over the news. We've heard it countless times this year that there's been problems with taxes. So people kind of have that on their mind and I think that's what these criminals play on also. They call and they use that because they know there's been issues and, and I think it just makes it all the more believable for these criminals to get to, to get uh, senior citizens. Absolutely. And or anyone really, but senior it's citizens It's worth noting particularly. that the IRS, you know, they've publicly come out and said they will never call someone on the telephone. Right, they never demand payment. They never demand payment up front. They will always notify you in the mail first, send you a bill, right. you know, notify mm -hmm. you of, of something through a mailer before any of the, any phone calls take place. Right. We'll go into the next scam is the technical support scam. I actually just got a phone call a couple weeks ago about someone who uh, got a call, their caller ID said Best Buy. And the number was out of state, it had Best Buy on the caller ID and the the person on the phone wanted them to uh, get into their computer on the basis that hey there's a problem with your computer yes. you know you have some sort of a uh, virus on your computer or we need to get into your computer and check your warranty status just any type of reason that they can tell this person I need to get into your computer Best Buy any technical support I've they're not going to actually call. call our home also and I talked to the person and they said they were um, from Microsoft okay actually and you know we've had trouble and a lot of people have had trouble with their computers and they've handled it over the phone like with AT&T or whomever they deal with so for a minute I was kind of falling for this they're like well you need to talk you know turn on your computer and we'll and then I, the, you know, you have to think for a minute. They're not going to call you out of the clear blue. No. Why would they be calling me out of the clear blue? And you, it's, it's, they sound believable, just like these other criminals sure. with the pigeon drop. So, it's, you know, like you said, Best Buy, Microsoft. I don't know what else they might even use AT and T. I don't know, but any, right. you know, any of these computer um, companies that. Um, that get you to turn on your computer and then they can find out all kinds of information just by getting into your computer. Right, you you click on, you know, they'll, they'll get you to get on the computer and, and click on, go on the internet and click on some sort of a link. And you, you know. think you're being helped. Right, you think you're being helped. The link gets them access into your computer yes. and then they pretty much have free reign of your computer yes. and can plant different, you know, things in there and, and uh, get banking information or, or uh, the sky's the limit. Yes. You know, so once they're in, then you've got some serious problems. Yes. So the main thing to remember about the, the technical support, technical support is some someone you call when you're having problems. Right. Not right. they they're don't call not, you right. and, and initiate that 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 contact with you. Right. That's someone you call and again, make sure you're calling a number, say, off of the Best Buy website, uh, uh, an accredited website, or, or yes. the Microsoft website, or whoever it might be. There's right. thousands of them out there. But make sure that it's a legitimate website that you're getting the number on off of and that you're calling them. Exactly. Technical support will never call you. Right. Now, you know, you may call technical support and they say, hey, I, we're busy, give, me, give us your number, we'll call you back. Exactly. That's different. Yes. But if they're just calling you out of the blue, and we've Red had flag that a should lot. go up and just say, "Hey, I'm I'm not interested, or I, I'll I'll call on my own. Thank you very much." Yes, but yes. never give them any access to your computer. Don't click on any links, and, and that goes for uh, computers. I mean, just not necessarily a phone call, but if you're surfing around on the internet and you get a a, a pop up, as they say, "Hey, you know, we can speed your computer up, or we can yeah. clear any type of viruses off." Stay away from those as well because. Um, somebody could be doing the exact same thing just by 
popping that up on your website browser. So please stay away from that as well. It's a lot of intelligent criminals out there. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so the next one to talk about is the lottery or the sweepstakes scam. Yes. And that's typically, it, I've seen it both by telephone and by mail. I have too. Okay. Yes. So uh, I've made this presentation before and I, in front of big groups of people, and I say, well, How many people have ever won the lottery before? You know, and say if it's 50 people, maybe one might. Put their hand up. Hey, I want to scratch off here, or yeah. you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, what are the odds of someone winning the Canadian lottery or the Jamaican lottery? Yes. You know, especially when you haven't bought a ticket. So that should be <laughs> that yes. should be your first. Yes. Nobody wins the lottery without playing the lottery. First of all, even if you do play the lottery, the chances are you're probably not going to win. So, uh, if you get a mailer that says you've won the lottery, contact this person or contact the, the claims office, you know, or somebody called, a lot of times it's by, by phone. Hey, you've won the lottery in the Canada, you know, you, you can get, you know, $10 million, you just have to send us $1,000 or $500. It might start, again, it'll start small and then, oh, well, there's been an issue, we need another 500, you know, mm -hmm. because then they've got you that you're hooked and they, they start increasing that amount. So. Again, what other lottery do you know that you have to put money up to yes. claim your money? Yes. It's just it's 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 a complete scam, and that should put the red flags up right away. If you haven't bought a Powerball ticket or Mega Millions or whatever the case may be, a scratch off, no, and you no, haven't won anything. Exactly, right? no legitimate sweet sweepstakes are going to require you to put up any money. Put up any money, so. correct? So, and again, you've got to play to win. Most of these you, people just get them out of the blue and say, "Hey, you've won money." I've seen a particular letter with the sweepstakes winning uh, from a, you know, a scammer. And in the letter, it even says, do not give out your account number because we, you know, blah, blah, blah. It was, it, when I was, it was very believable, very believable. Sure. And, but of course, and you're just supposed to call. Now this letter um, had you call. And so then over the phone, they get you to do something. In order to receive this, you've got to, um, pay the the um, oh the different things that are what do they call it like um, fees right. transfer fees sure. or you know they come up with some believable things which, which turn out to be large sums of money yes you know. yes so. so or lawyer you know again the lawyers we go well the lawyers have to go through yes. this and that's these are lawyers fees you know, yes because it's ten million dollars well, yeah gonna, you you're know. gonna need a lawyer right so yes. it, it becomes it it becomes very believable it does but it does please be aware of that uh, you know if you receive a, a, a sweepstakes mailer or a phone call okay. Uh, okay so the last one that we'll talk about today is the the contractors all right uh, and I'm not trying to to take away from any legitimate contractors all right but there are a lot of contractors that will take advantage of of anyone not just senior citizens but anyone yes. and um, typically we see most of the scamming type of contractors after a large storm mm -hmm. you know an area that's been flooded and we've in Florida we've seen a lot of that we've seen power yes. outages we've seen floods we've seen uh, hail damage mm -hmm. tornadoes so we've seen a lot of this and and, and they call them typically call them storm chasers is, is what the term is and after the storm comes through everybody shows up hey we'll you know we'll do it for cheaper um, we've got extra uh, extra things from another job we can give you a good deal mm -hmm. uh, they typically want you to sign contracts right then and there it if, if you don't sign now the deals gonna go away and yeah. you won't get it you know you're gonna pay twice as much or they'll want money, a large sum of money down. Okay, mm -hmm. so just be aware of those things. Don't rush into signing any contracts. Don't think the deal is going to go away. Uh, other things to do with contractors, huge is to contact the Better Business Bureau. Get references from these contractors. Take your time maybe get bids from different contractors to make sure that everybody... Exactly. Most of these bids shouldn't be real far away right. from each other they should be pretty pretty close within hundreds of dollars of each you know and i think typically the scammer wants you to act 
immediately. Act immediately, right. They want you to act immediately, put money down, sign that contract. Yeah, because they're only going to be in this area a little while, and this deal is only going to last. Right. So, you, you right. know, they get you thinking you want to save that money. Right. But um, it, it usually, I knew one lady who was very intelligent, and she ended up falling for this contractor scam and it was over after one of the storms and this particular contractor came with what he said was his wife and a child with them so it made it so believable sure he was trying to make extra money for his family right. and she didn't know these people from Adam so I think it, it's like you had said before you should initiate the call don't fall for any of these people traveling around right and really, you know, Florissant has the ordinance where, you know, you can't just go door to door like that anyway. Right. You have to have a, an or in Florissant, you have to have a solicitor's, solicitor's permit. Right. And those permits are, are through City Hall and City Hall will actually kind of do a little bit of legwork and, right. and make sure that it's a legitimate company before they allow any solicitation permits. And it's actually a permit that's worn conspicuously around mm -hmm. the person's neck and it actually has the city seal and I believe it says solicitor's permit on fluorescent solicitor's permit and it has their picture on it. So this is another way that so, um, our residents, even if they don't fall for somebody doing that, they could call the police department and say, hey, could sure. you check out these people that are out there, right. see if they got a solicitor's permit. We get calls Maybe the they do, but they probably don't. Because right. if you have a legitimate company, they're probably not gonna be going, hanging around outside trying to get business that way. Exactly, right. We'll come out, we'll, we'll find out what's going on. Right. If they've got Ask a permit, them. that's fine. Mm -hmm. As long as they're, they're adhering to the, the regulations, right. which is uh, no soliciting after dark. Uh, you know, they can't be soliciting after the, the nighttime hours, or even I think it's dusk. There's, you can't, so there's, there should be no knocks on your door after it's dark outside. Right. And somebody wanting to sell you uh, books or, or what, you know, the yeah. sky's the limit on what, if what the a, sales are. If they're scamming people, they're not going to have a solicitor's permit. Right. Chances are, right? right. So, so you could save other people. Sure. Like, just like before, just by simply calling the police department, telling them there's people in my neighborhood. They're out there. Could you come out and just check them out? Absolutely. You know, and yep. maybe, and they might be legitimate, but it could be, and, we'll, and that's, and if that's they are, for that's, us to determine. That's fine. Right. Yes. Right. So, and even if they have a solicitor's permit, if they don't, if you don't want to be solicited, you just simply tell them I'm not interested and, and close the door. If if they're aggressive, and don't go away, that needs to be reported to us as well. Right. Even if they have a solicitor's permit, because that's one of the right. That's one of the the. The regulations that we have is mm -hmm. you can't be aggressive with right. our residents, you know. So mm -hmm. if they tell you no, that's the answer. Keep on going. Yes. So we want to know if there's any type of aggressive behavior going on as well. Mm -hmm. So just if you have, if there's any questions, call the police department. And it's I think it's pretty unusual even to see door to door solicitors nowadays. I don't. We I don't still have them. The summertime, there's more. Yeah, I've seen you know, a few. The, but uh, typically, what we see is in, in the summertime is uh, magazine and book sales okay. by some college students. Okay. Um, alarm companies are always oh, the yeah, big door to door. Right. About that. Yeah. And, you know, so be be weary of the alarm companies that you've never heard of. You know, sometimes they'll they'll uh, again. Oh, we have free installation. We have a great deal. Sign up now. You know, yes. and it turns out the 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 monthly fees are outrageous, and or the upfront there's a big upfront cost that you didn't know about. Yes. And then you sign that contract, and, and so then they, they hold that over your head and say, well, now you owe us this money. And so stay away from the large, or I'm sorry, stay away from the uh, no-name alarm companies. And again, mm -hmm. the Better Business Bureau. And I was just going to say that. But you know, and, and the Attorney General's office. The Missouri office, Attorney General. Can, see if there's been any complaints. Take their information. See if there's been any complaints. Do your research. Don't make any immediate decisions on anything like this. It's just not worth it. And I think that's so important because, like I said, these scammers, they don't want you to think about it because then you may not do it, right? So take your time that's and, right. and do, your, do your homework, do, do your, your homework. research, and yeah. don't let them pressure you into making a decision that, that you'd be sorry for. Right. So. And, and with all these scams, you know, especially the, the technical support one, I always say somebody's got that family member, the niece, their nephew, their grandkids, their yeah. children, yes. who are pretty good with computers. Yes. So call that person. Say, oh, okay, well, I, you know, 
dismiss the phone call and, and call that person that you know or that you know is decent with computers and ask them. And most of the time they'll be able to tell you, hey, that's stay away from that. Or if you have a computer issue, I'll come over and take care of it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, if you don't have someone who knows anything, then, then you, you contact call. them yes. direct. Yes. You, know, you can take your computer to Best Buy and drop it off. That's what you need to do. And I've seen senior citizens who just don't want to hang up on people. Right. <laughs> I guess it's pretty easy for me, but sure. you know, it's just like if you, you know, yeah. it, it just hang up. Right. It's better to be safe than sorry. You don't need to be talking. You don't need to be even cordial to that person if you didn't make that call and uh, just hang up. That's one of the things you can do. Right. Um, along with reporting, like you said, reporting things. Well, even the Federal Trade Commission, they want to know if you've gotten a letter that that is one thing or a letter or even a, a telephone scam. The Federal Trade Commission, I think, is, is one of the uh, government agencies that want to know about that. So right. uh, we've got that phone number. We have 1-877-382-4357. And any of these phone numbers that we've been talking about here today or any of the information that, that, that we've uh, talked about you can always come up to the senior office in Florissant City Hall where we can give you out this information, give you these phone numbers, or you could even, you can go to, up to the police department. You can department. contact the police department. If it's an emergency, dial 911. Our non-emergency line is 831-7000 with a 314 area code. My direct line is 314-830-6042 is my direct line in my office. And then my email address is cdhart at fluorescentmode.com. And we can put that up on the screen as well. Okay. So, but if there's any questions, if it's an emergency, please call the, the, the emergency line or the police department direct because I'm not always at work. And, uh, but if you had just have a casual question, I would be happy to answer those. I think you and would as well. Too. So we're here to, to make sure you guys don't get scammed and, and exactly. uh, lose any money or, or uh, information as well. So. And it's always better to be safe than sorry. And I think, like you were talking at the before we started this, you'd use the little line. Sure, it, <laughs> right. It's the basis of this whole thing. If it's too good to be true, it is. It is. I mean, just use that. Keep that in the back of your mind. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Exactly. You should take exactly. time to figure out whether this is a legitimate, um, you know, uh, call or a letter, letter or, or whatever. whatever the case may and be. You, you certainly, like I said, I invite you to come to the senior office up in Florissant City Hall or give us a call at 314-839-7604 if we can help you or go over some of these things that we've talked to today, talked about today. So, Craig, I guess that's it. If you have anything as is, is a wrap-up or if we, uh, you know, just... Just if you have any questions, things, scams. I mean, there's thousands of scams out there, but it's something we didn't cover and, and you'd like me to talk about it with you, again, my contact information uh, is available. And um, please call me and let me know, and I'll be happy to chat with you about it. All right. So. Well, thank you for joining You're me welcome. here today. And thank you for joining me on It's a Wonderful Life.